greatest of right now. Wilder Fury 2, here we go. start with this per a tweet from the boxing voice blair cobbs had this to say about terence crawford he says he has to work incredibly hard because he's not talented the boxing voice podcast interviewed blair the flair cobbs on april 9th and he had a lot to say to which wbo super featherweight champion jamel herring replied we just seen this man in vegas during the wilder versus fury weigh-in and he had nothing but nice things to say to bud when we ran up on him man i gotta start recording these encounters now, in case you're not familiar with Blair the Flair Cobbs, this is a Golden Boy Promotions fighter that fights out of the welterweight division. You might have seen him on the undercard of Canelo versus Kovalev or the undercard of Ryan Garcia versus Francisco Fonseca. Those of you out there who happen to catch Blair the Flair Cobbs on both of those cards, you won't need me to tell you that this guy is in no position to question the talent of anyone, much less Terence Crawford, a more accomplished fighter than Blair, yeah. more proven, more skilled yeah. fighter than Blair, a more top-ranked fighter than Blair. Yeah. Now, on the undercard of Canelo versus Kovalev, we saw Blair in action against Cervantes, and Blair was dropped in the very first round of that fight. Was dropped by Cervantes, Carlos Cervantes, who very much is a bring along kind of guy, journeyman kind of guy. This is the kind of guy that dropped Blair very recently. But Blair subsequently did go on to win the fight. He moved on from that to square off against the likes of Samuel Nkwaye on the undercard of Ryan Garcia versus Francisco Fonseca. And I have to say that Blair didn't look any better in that fight either. That Blair seemed to have hit his ceiling in terms of his own talent level in his last two fights. So it's kind of obvious that this guy is in no position to talk when it comes to the talent level of a fighter who is far more accomplished than himself. So what's really going on here? I'll tell you what's going on here. Blair knows, like you know, like I know, like everybody knows, that the welterweight division for the most part is dominated by the PBC. But Blair himself, being a Golden Boy Promotions fighter, is not likely to be able to land a fight with the likes of an Errol Spence, a Keith Thurman, a Danny Garcia, a Sean Porter, a Jordanis Ugas, a Sergei Lipinets, as the PBC's island policy doesn't really include taking on anybody else's fighters, that they'd like to keep as much of the action in-house as possible. Blair knows this like you know this. I know this. Everybody knows this. And it's for this reason that perhaps he's deciding to throw shade at Terence Crawford because he knows he's got a better chance at landing a Crawford fight than a fight with any of the aforementioned welterweights that are with the PBC. He knows that between Golden Boy Promotions and Top Rank, such a fight can be made as Golden Boy and Top Rank have a better working relationship with each other than either of them have with the PBC. Thus, if Blair is to contend for a world title any time in the near future, it wouldn't be with a PBC fighter. It would have to be with someone else's fighter. Someone else like Terrence Crawford, WBO champion in the welterweight division. With top rank as between top rank and Golden Boy Promotions, such a fight can be made. They've worked together before, and I've no doubt they'd work together on this, lest we forget. The Vasil Lomachenko and Jorge Linares fight. That was a fight put together by both Top Rank and Golden Boy Promotions. Blair likely knows, like everybody knows, that the PBC aren't too keen on working with other outfits. So he's not going to get a fight with one of their guys, but with Terrence Crawford, who's facing a scarcity of opponents, who's being frozen out, in many ways, out of the welterweight scene. Blair knows he stands his best chance of getting a world title opportunity against that guy. So these may be the beginning stages, the building blocks of what could be Crawford versus Cobbs. Might be Blair's intention to talk his way into that fight as 
not Terence Crawford's mandatory challenger. Terence just satisfied his mandatory in Igus Kavaliauskas, and what Blair might be hoping is that Terence will give him a world title opportunity as a voluntary by talking his shit mm -hmm. to get Bud's attention. Bud, who, in case you're not already aware, is a very competitive guy. What Blair likely figures is, you know what I'll do, I'll start talking about this guy now so that once boxing resumes, two to three fights down the line, I can get a fight with that guy because by then, the fight will have built momentum. It's likely that this is what Blair Cobbs is doing. Blair Cobbs, who likes to model himself after the WWE's... WWF if you're my age. Ric Flair, the nature boy. Maybe in Blair Cobb's mind, he thinks in two to three fights he'll be ready for Terrence Crawford. Maybe that's what he thinks. He'll be ready by that time, but in truth, I don't see anything in Blair Cobb's that Terrence Crawford has to worry about. I don't. I think of Blair Cobb's as a less put together, yeah. gluten free Keith Thurman. <laughs> Something along those lines. As Blair's approach does seem to rely more on physicality than finesse. That he's a young, strong, athletic fighter. He is. He's really not a sharpshooter. He's really not a finesse guy, a textbook conventional kind of guy. And in that way, most of what he goes out there and does is based on his physical abilities. He's not a finesse guy. And I reiterate, that was evident in the Cervantes fight, the fight where Blair Cobbs got put down in a feist round. I mean, you get put down in a feist round by a joinerman, so you can turn around and start talking about how Terrence Crawford's not talented? Huh? It's obvious that there must be some ulterior motive at work here. Either that, or Blair Cobbs is just that deluded. Neither would surprise me. <laughs> I'd feel so inclined to accuse Blair Cobbs of clout chasing but is that what this is is this a case of clout chasing well that depends if blair cobbs is saying what he's saying as an effort some kind of attempt to get terence crawford in the ring then no it's not clout chasing that's the name of the game that is your job in order to be the best you have to beat the best and at minimum terence crawford is one of the best welterweights in the world regardless of where you might have him ranked on your divisional rank standings or your pound for pound list or where the powers that be have him ranked. He is one of the best welterweights in the world. He is ranked as one of the most skilled boxers in the world. And if this is Blair Cobbs's attempt to get Crawford in the ring, then no, it's it's not clout chasing. That's his job. However, if he's just trying to use Terrence Crawford's name to get attention without any real intention of fighting him, then that, that, would be clout chasing that you're just trying to use this guy's notoriety to get yourself notoriety without having to fight him this is a fairly recent development a fairly new trend in the sport of boxing as in older eras of boxing if you were calling a guy out using a guy's name mentioning the guy saying not so nice things about the guy it's because you wanted to fight that guy whereas in this era of boxing it's not uncommon to see a guy talking all sorts of shit about some other guy whilst simultaneously refusing to fight him oh. example is keith thurman all the things he had to say about terence crawford yet his dance card's not booked right now you want to back up all that talk no i'll tell you what you want to do you want to have a rematch with tanny garcia Why? that nobody's asking for instead of challenging terence crawford for his title terence crawford who you said was barely a champion well why don't you go out there and show us whether or not he's barely a champion you know you don't got anything on the docket, nothing on the horizon. Danny Garcia, in all likelihood, is going to fight Errol Spence. Not you. In his next fight. Not you. So why are you looking at that guy? Why? It's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Jermall Charlo and Demetrius Andre. That kind of stuff. Yeah. More famous set of failed negotiations in the heavyweight division between Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua. Deontay Wilder, who had no shortage of negative things to say about Anthony Joshua, yet when he was offered a hundred million dollars to see that fight get done, what does he do? He walks away. Reiterate, this is a fairly recent development in the sport of boxing. You didn't really see this kind of stuff in older eras, older generations of the sport. Nine times out of ten in the older eras, you know, if you saw one guy saying something about another guy, it's because he wanted the fight. He wasn't just using that guy's name to get articles written about him. He actually wanted the fight. So if Blair is using Terrence Crawford's name his fashion as a means to get Crawford in the ring, then no, it's not clout chasing, he's just doing his job. But if it's the other way around, you know, if he's offered a Crawford fight and he walks away from it, then we can safely say that it's another case of clout 
chasing. The younger generation, the next generation of welterweights is here. Whether you're talking about Virgil Ortiz's spat with Errol Spence via Twitter, I'm sure you guys are all aware of that, or you're talking about Blair Cobbs' recent comments in regards to Terrence Crawford. The next generation of welterweights is here. Yes, sir. Looks like they're looking for smoke. In lightweight news, Javier Fortuna's promoter wants Luke Campbell fight first, then Devin Haney. Wait a minute. Isn't he doing that backwards? Haney versus Fortuna will be a spectacular fight when it happens. However, we already have a signed contract to fight Luke Campbell, said Lukowicz. I'm happy to hear that Devin Haney has had a successful recovery, but I suspect the WBC will not go back on their ruling simply because it is more convenient to one fighter. I propose that Fortuna and Campbell face off for the interim title and the winner must agree to fight Devin Haney within 90 days. I further propose to let Devin Haney rightfully defend his title against the contender the WBC mandates if he agrees to face Fortuna versus Campbell winner next. In fact, it would be a fantastic opportunity for the WBC to show off the incredible talent in their lightweight division if both fights happened on the same show, making two fantastic main events in one night. Lukowicz says he will abide by any ruling the WBC makes, but expects his Dominican power puncher will be in the ring with Campbell before the explosive showdown with Haney. A double header really isn't a bad idea that you could see Luke Campbell in action against Javier Fortuna on the same card as Devin Haney versus somebody in the WBC's rank standings. It's not a bad proposition. It's actually a pretty good idea, and it helps to build what would be the fight between Devin Haney and the winner of Campbell versus Fortuna. It's not a bad idea. It isn't. It's just strange trying to reconcile why Samson Lukowicz would rather have Javier fight Luke instead of Devin. The whole point of fighting Luke is to get a crack at the title. Yeah. You're essentially prioritizing the eliminator, the world title eliminator, over the world title fight. Yeah. It's kind of backwards, isn't it? The whole point of the eliminator is to get the chance to fight for the world title. Here, you actually have the opportunity to skip that step and be fast-tracked into a title shot. You're choosing to... Forgo the title shot. Okay. Hey, you're the same as boxers. They got some strange ways. They got a strange way of thinking. I don't know. Maybe Samson Lukowicz figures his guy Javier stands a better chance of beating Luke than he does of beating Devin. Maybe. Maybe he looks at it that way. I mean, I'm not telling you that's what I think. I'm just trying to wrap my mind around what he thinks, what he might be thinking. That, you know what? If I send Javier in there to fight Devin, he loses that fight. And, you know, where do we go from there? Whereas if I have him fight Luke, and then I have him fight Devin, well, that's two paydays. Could be that way. Or it could be, put simply, because the contracts have already been signed and the ink has already dried for the Fortuna versus Campbell fight. Thus, maybe Samson Lukowicz doesn't want to enter into a new set of negotiations for a Devin Haney fight. It could be that way, that the legwork for the Campbell fight has already been done. He doesn't want to have to start over. Although the Devin Haney negotiations are an eventuality, one way or another, it's something that you're going to have to do. That if you make it through Luke, you still got to deal with Devin, so why not skip a step if you have that option? Yeah. That goes back to my previous scenario. Maybe it's because Samson Lukowicz might want to get two paydays out of this instead of just one. He will get paid for fighting Luke, and then he'll get paid again for fighting Devin. Still strange, considering it's not a foregone conclusion. He makes it past Luke. It's not. I mean, Luke's pretty solid. He's formidable himself. What if you decided to fight Luke? and Luke beats you. Then what? What? Then you don't get to make it to that Devin Haney payday. So it's strange. That's what? That Samson is choosing to go about things this way for his fighter. And even though having all those fights happen on the same card is a good idea and it does help to build what would be the fight between Devin and the winner of Campbell versus Fortuna, even though that's a good idea, it does kind of put Devin in a compromising position because if you look at the top two guys in the WBC's rank standings, that's Javier, and that's Luke. You can't fight any of them. Obviously. Go down a little lower, you look at the number three guy, and the number three guy is Ryan Garcia, and Ryan Garcia is supposed to be fighting the number five guy in his very next fight, Jorge Linares. Does leave Ivan Mendy, the number four guy, as the highest ranked available contender. On this situation, Ivan Mendy's actually not a bad choice. Not a bad choice 
for Devin Haney as Yvonne Mendy. He has been in there with Luke Campbell two times, and they're one and one with each other, with Yvonne Mendy winning the first fight and Luke Campbell subsequently avenging that loss in the rematch. Just as well, Yvonne Mendy has been in there with the likes of Victor Postal, and he didn't win that fight, but he does bring those experiences to the table. Currently, Yvonne Mendy is coming off of four consecutive wins in a row. The guy hasn't lost a fight since 2018. That was the Luke Campbell rematch I just mentioned. Since then, Yvonne Mendy has added four professional wins to his record. And ultimately, the name of Ivan Mendy seems like a more sound choice in light of those ranked behind Ivan. Jorge Linares, who's supposed to be fighting Ryan Garcia, his next fight, and Zaur Abdullaev, who Devin Haney already fought. Devin Haney already beat. I don't think anybody wants to see a rematch. A little further down is the name of Lee Selby would also be an interesting choice. I don't think it makes as much sense as an Yvonne Mendy fight, though it is something to consider. Better still, it's not a bad idea having all these guys fight on the same card to build up their fight. It's not a bad idea. It's just strange seeing anyone prioritize a final eliminator for a title shot instead of the title shot itself. I'd sure like to see how Devin Haney's detractors try and spin this one is now he's obviously not going to get a Lomachenko or Lopez fight no nope. forget about Ryan Garcia that's not happening in the near future no nope. now also neither Javier Fortuna or Luke Campbell are available options for Devin Haney so what's this kid supposed to do oh. I often hear it said by Devin Haney's detractors that for all the praise he receives he has a very thin resume and hasn't fought anyone and I'm thinking to myself in this situation who the fuck's he supposed to fight? Yeah. Vasil Lomachenko being elevated to franchise champion pretty much put the kibosh on Devin Haney's chance to fight him. It wasn't just a title shot. It wasn't just a chance to win a world title. It was a chance to fight Vasil Lomachenko. All oh, that's been nicks. Forget about Teofimo Lopez because he's busy with Vasil Lomachenko. Don't even bring up Javante Davis because Javante Davis, while being in the lightweight division, doesn't actually fight very many lightweights. At least he won't be anytime soon. Nope. Neither Luke Campbell or Javier Fortuna are viable options for Devin. So in this situation, what the fuck is Devin supposed to do? Who's he supposed to fight? I mean, you want to sit there complaining about how this kid got a belt without addressing that that was only as a result of what the Sol Lomachenko's people did. Otherwise, it wouldn't have happened that way. And you want to complain that he hasn't fought anybody, but you tell me. You tell it. In this situation, who is he supposed to fight? You, I guess. Any volunteers? <laughs>